Welcome to Global Kids Ministry under the leadership of Youth Pastor Carrie Royal online every Sunday live at 12 noon. This exciting, creative, and interactive ministry fellowships at Kingdom Faith Global Ministries under senior pastors, Pastors Andre and Kim Sanders, every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. at 18240 Southwest 110th Avenue. Every fourth Sunday is Youth Sunday. All are welcome. Come and be blessed. Hello, everybody. This is Youth Pastor Carrie Royal from Kingdom Faith Global Ministries, and we are still in our Head of the Class series. This week is week seven. Isn't that awesome? We are in week seven of our Head of the Class series, and we started off with Jesus as a teacher, but now the Holy Spirit is here, and he's been teaching us and empowering us for greater, because Jesus said greater works will we do. And as we receive G the Holy Spirit as our teacher, as he lives inside of us, he empowers us for more. He empowers us for greater. Yes, and he will be our teacher forever. He is eternal. And just because you don't see him does not mean that he's not there. Because he leads us and guides us and teaches us and empowers us for more. All you have to do is believe because without believing in him, you can't achieve the greater that God has for you. That's why he was sent. But see, you must choose to use everything that he empowers you with. You must choose to. It's not just going to overwhelm you and say, oh, I can't control myself. He gives us free will. So it's a choice. And as you choose to follow, as you choose to believe, you will get there. But see, last week, the Holy Spirit gave Paul vision in the middle of a storm that helped him and many others to, to, to be delivered. It helped them to be set free. It helped them, it helped them to, be, to, to be saved from a storm that would want it to devour them. And this week, this week the Holy Spirit is taking us deeper into servitude because it's not about us all the time. This week, he's, helping, he's t showing us Peter He's given Peter vision for ministry work that empowers him to help someone else. It's not even about him. See, he was about being a help to someone else. And that's what ministry is all about. It's about service. It's about doing. We're here to be a witness, to help others, to serve. See, many times the Spirit will lead you to do something else just for someone else. And when you obey, it brings change. It brings change, and it requires that we walk by faith, not by what, not by sight, not by what you see. But last week we talked about our motto: build the church, reveal the Father, make sons and daughters. But guess what, global kids? This week it's all about the name, because a, a name tells us who you are. It's a label, and that's why this week our lesson is called Kingdom Faith Walkers. Yes, it's teaching us how to become Kingdom Faith Walkers, Global Kids. And the Bible basis comes from Acts chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. And as usual, we have a memory verse, and it states, But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. That comes from Acts. Chapter 1, verse 8. And we're splitting this lesson up into three topics. And those topics are inspire change, ignite change, and invoke change. Because that's what Kingdom Faith Walkers do. And part one is inspire change. But before we begin, Global Kids, I have a question for you. Think about this. Has a beggar ever approached you for a handout? Better yet, think about this one. Has anyone ever really needed your help? If so, what did you do? What did you do? How did you handle it? See, that's what happened to Peter and John. They were approached by a beggar who was crippled from birth. See, this crippled beggar was carried to the gate called Beautiful every day, every single day to ask for alms. And alms is just what you do for those in need, okay? It's just helping the needy. 
But the crippled beggar was sat there every day at the temple, in front of the temple, to ask church people, to ask believers for help. Every day he went there, every day he was carried, and guess what? No one ever took the time to minister to his situation. No one ever took the time with him or even believed in him to do more. So he was never inspired to do anything else. He went to that gate every single day and did the same thing. He sat there and he begged. He asked for alms. But there was one day that was different. This one day in particular, he was encountered by two men who were filled with the Holy Spirit. He was encountered by two men who was led by God and faithfully determined to do the will of the King, to do the will of the Father. He met Kingdom Faith Walkers. See, Kingdom Faith Walkers, I told you, they bring change. There's a difference between people who call themselves to church and people who live a kingdom lifestyle. The people who were going into the kingdom, not helping this beggar, not inspiring this beggar. See, they were the church folk, but kingdom faith walkers are the two that met him that day and approached him and inspired change. See, they accept kingdom citizenship and they walk by faith, not by sight. It takes power. It takes the power of the Holy Spirit, even in being a witness to inspire change. Because that's what kingdom faith walkers do. They see potential in others and the ability in others and inspire change. And that's what Peter and John did that day with that crippled beggar. They were a witness to greater through the spirit. They had vision. They received vision through the Holy Spirit. They had the ability to see something greater in that man. They saw potential. Because we all have potential. See, a vision allows you to see potential in others and to pray for their release. Kingdom faith walkers are led by the Spirit to do everything that they do, even in being a witness. That's why the scripture says, and you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses. You shall be my witnesses. And kingdom faith walkers believe in the invisible and expect the impossible. So they look, they expect vision. See, you got to expect it. And Peter and John expected it. A kingdom faith walker does not put trust in his own ability, but in the kingdom of God is where their trust lies. A kingdom faith walker is directed by the Holy Spirit. Proverbs 3, 6 says, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. When you allow the teacher, the Holy Spirit, to direct your paths, anything is possible. Anything is possible when you believe. Because the Holy Spirit follows the will of the Father. And the Father's will, God's will, is that we will all have abundant life. But they didn't give him money when he asked for alms. See, abundance to one person may be money. So, you may ask... Well, well, why didn't God allow them to give him money? Just because your will, it's your will doesn't mean that that's the Father's will for you. Okay? What the man received from Peter and John was far greater. Far greater than money. Because it gave him the ability to produce. It gave him the ability to produce abundance for himself rather than relying on others. It released his potential. Okay, that's what kingdom faith walkers do. They release potential in others because their potential is released. And they can see the ability in others. They can, they can, they can expect God to use them to serve, to, to help enhance the ability of others. See, they see things through kingdom perspective. Just like Jesus did. They think about, think, you know what? <laughs> Think about how many people never, ever really reach their potential. Think about it. It's a very few people on this earth that have walked this earth that have achieved their fullest potential. We know Jesus did, of course. We can say Elijah did, prophet Elijah, because God removed him from earth before he even died. But how many people are actually achieving their fullest potential. See, many of people are not reaching their potential. 
And that's just crippled. See, crippled is not necessarily, you don't have to be lame. You don't have to be, it doesn't have to be a fickle, a physical state that cripples you. Crippled is just not functioning as God wants you to. As crippled is just not doing what you're supposed to be doing. The Holy Spirit helps you to see the ability in others to encourage and to inspire more. But before Peter addressed the crippled man's request, he told him, he said, look at us, look at us, look at me and John. See, the crippled man focused his attention on the men of God. See, he focused his attention on the men of God. When he focused his attention, it brought, it inspired him. Because it brought focus. See, he changed his focus from all the distractions, from everybody else and what they were about to give, to what God, to what the man of God, to what the men of God were about to give. He said, okay, I'm ready. He focused now his attention on them. Many times when the Holy Spirit wants to do something for us, we're distracted by so many other things that we miss what the Holy Spirit wants to do. See, maybe he didn't want to miss anyone else passing by. He wanted to get all that he could get. But the Holy Spirit had more. So John and Peter said, look on us. You need to focus your attention on us. We need to be on one accord so you can receive what the Spirit has for you. It's time to be inspired for something greater. So who knows? Who knows what that distraction was? But when they brought focus, it, it inspires change. See, kingdom faith walkers are focused. Peter learned that in Jesus' classroom when he had to walk on water. And now he was still using it. See, he was learning what he used in the classroom. He learned that anything is possible when you believe. Faith keeps you focused. And when you focus, lose focus, you can sink. So, as Peter walked by faith, he saw the ability in the crippled man. He received vision to serve. See, vision is vital, not just for you, but for life. For life, for life for you and for others. But for servitude as well, because we must know God's priority for our lives, even in our service. Because service is ministry. Service is not, ministry is just not for leaders. Because service is ministry, it's for everybody. Vision comes from God and be given for anything that God wants to do through you. It brings purpose and it reveals ministry. So now while Peter was seeing the man hold, the crippled man hold, the beggar hold, the crippled man was still seeing, he was, he, he was seeing dollar signs. But Peter said, focus, look at us. And vision allows you to see one thing while, while, while everybody else can see something else. But that's what vision does. It makes you see something completely different. And that's what Peter saw. So he was able to inspire change. And when he was saying, looking, he, when he was looking at him from he was different perspective, through the kingdom perspective, through God's perspective, he was able to help. He was able to serve. But Peter thought that he went there for prayer. But the Holy Spirit had a different plan. See, when you allow the Holy Spirit to direct your paths, Expect them to change your plans. See, there's a, a global kid and and that that I really that I really that I really admire. See, he always steps up. He always steps up to the plate. But sometimes things are we go through things that we don't expect that can be a little disturbing or frustrating. And see, that global kid is Manny. Sometimes we have to, we, our plans and our plans, we expect to fulfill one thing. And then when the plans change, we don't know how to reposition ourselves. I don't know if he did in this, but I know he went through something that he didn't really care for. But sometimes the Holy Spirit will change your plans. Now, what happened with Manny was COVID. COVID happened for a lot of us, but even through COVID, some of our youth were still able to do some of the things that they really love and that they were used to doing. He had just got into football the year before, and he was looking forward to another year of football. But when COVID happened, 
He had elderly people in his home and it did not allow him to do football any longer. He had to stop. He had to stop what he loved. But sometimes things will change your plans. That same thing happened for my daughter. She loved basketball and that's what she wanted to do. But an injury changed her plans. But see, when things happen like that, when the Holy Spirit changes your plans, God is trying to lead you to something else. So I have a word for you, Manny. I have a word for you, Emmanuel. God has something else for you to do. Seek God. Find out what it is. He may have already given you vision for something that you might not have realized was him. But God has something else for you to do. And kingdom faith walkers go with the flow. Kingdom faith go walkers go with the flow because they know it's the spirit leading them. My daughter, Tatiana, she used to play basketball and an injury came and God led her into singing because that was where he wanted her to serve. And God has somewhere for you to serve, Manny. So seek God. Allow him to bring you vision. Ask him, what is it that you have for me? And even though, back to Peter, it wasn't intended, what he had, what he had intended for that, for that day didn't happen. It brought hope. It brought change for, for other people. It brought him into servitude. And as you allow the spirit to lead you, you find fulfillment. Just like Peter. You find joy and peace. And he, he was brought into something that he would have never expected. But that's what the Holy Spirit does. So when you follow the flow of the spirit, expect him to change your plans. But listen to this Holy Spirit. Because whenever one door closes, one, one door, one path ends, he has directions for another. And that's when change is going to be ignited. He's ready to do something with you. He's ready to do something through you. See, if you're set in your own way, you're not set in God's way. If you're determined to follow what you want to do, your own path, you're not determined to follow God's path. And God has something for each of us to do. The king is in control and he is leading through our new teacher, the Holy Spirit. If we don't follow his leading, we can be just like the church who only gave the man change instead of producing change, instead of bringing change, instead of igniting change, instead of inspiring change and invoking change. Or it could be even worse. We could be like those who just passed them by. But guess what? It is review time. And we're about to review part one. Inspire change. And in this section, we are going to be doing true or false. Number one, the Holy Spirit gives us power to help you witness more. We've had this one each week since the Holy Spirit has been our new teacher. What is it, Global Kids? True or false? Because you need to make sure you got this. Excellent. Awesome job. Excellent. It is definitely true because the Holy Spirit gives us power which helps us to witness more. He said we shall be a witness. This was not a, 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 a question if we would. It was a command. It was a statement that we would. And he knows all things. Number two, kingdom faith walkers are those who accept their kingdom citizenship and walk by faith, not by sight. True again, it takes faith to be a kingdom faith walker. It takes faith. That's why you're a kingdom faith walker. And kingdom and faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But in that you walk by faith, you don't walk by sight. You don't walk by what you see. You have vision. God gives you vision for more. All right, number three. Everyone in the church is not a kingdom faith walker. Was that true or was that false? Definitely true. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Global Kids. Thank you, everyone participating today. But no, everyone in the church is not a Kingdom Faith Walker. Kingdom Faith Walkers inspire change. Kingdom Faith Walkers ignite change. And Kingdom Faith Walkers invoke change. 
Because see, you have to have faith. Faith gives you vision to see through kingdom perspective. It gives you the ability to receive vision because you expect. You expect God to do more, so you're looking for more. You don't just believe in what you see with your normal eyes. Vision is more. Vision is greater than what you see with your natural eyes. See, if it's something that 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 that's normal, it's a, if it's something that's that's not out of this world, it's not vision. It's got to be something greater than what you believe you can do in your own ability. That's vision, and that's what God is trying to give us: vision, something greater than what we can do in our own ability. And we have to see that for others as well. And then we help them. We help empower them to serve. Because see, Peter, he saw the man's ability. He saw something in that man that that man didn't see in himself. So he was able to inspire him. Number four, kingdom faith walkers inspire others. I just gave it to you, global kids. Definitely, absolutely true. Thank you so much. And number five, vision can allow you to see the potential in others to pray for their release. True again, true again. Thank you so much, everybody. Great job, great job, great job. Vision does allow you to see the potential in others. And when you see that pot potential, it's meant to do something about it. Because God has given you vision to serve. And what can we do but pray? Because prayer invites God into the situation. Prayer is saying, I know I can't do it. God, you can do it. Peter didn't just help the man up. He prayed first. All right. And the next section is ignite change. See, when Peter told the crippled man, look at us. Look at us. We saw that it changed his focus. Okay? He, he was inspired to do something different. He had hope. He was expecting. Well, see, hope and expectation ignites change. It ignites what's inside of you. And then you can begin to believe. See, Acts chapter 3 verse 4 says, Peter looked straight at him as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. See, we must expect to get something from the Holy Spirit. Because see, what he was really looking at was the Spirit moving inside of them. And we have to expect something from the Holy Spirit. He might have thought he was looking at them, but as his focus changed to them, he was watching the Holy Spirit and what the Holy Spirit was about to do through them. And since they inspired a change, they had to ignite change. See, if you're going to motivate someone, you have to do something about it. You have to be willing to do something. Give them direction. Don't just inspire someone and then leave them there alone to figure it out. God has revealed something to you that you can that you can help them through. That's what the Holy Spirit was doing for Peter. He was giving him direction. And as he was Peter was following the leader, then Peter was able to give direction. That's the same thing he did for the crippled man. The crippled beggar didn't have vision. Peter had to guide him through to his breakthrough. And that's what we have to do. That's what we do. We're called to serve. We're called to ignite change global kids come on y'all come on kingdom faith walkers we are kingdom faith walkers kingdom faith walkers are leaders leaders inspire ignite and invoke change see igniting is getting something started like when you start a fire it builds up something in you something like something that's burning inside of you that that just has to be released so Peter, Peter, and, 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 and Peter never had that problem. He never had a problem with that. He was the one who always stepped up to the, to the, to the, to the podium. He always st stepped up to the challenge. He always took that extra step. And that's, and that's, and that's what he was doing now. But when, because he did that, Jesus had gave him three rewards, three awards at the graduation. Y'all remember the graduation ceremony? Graduation day. He said, feed my lambs, take care of my sheep, and feed my sheep. 
And here he was taking care of a sheep. So he was, he was fulfilling purpose. He was fulfilling ministry. And we know, Kingdom Faith Walkers, that whenever there's an obstacle in your way that's preventing you from doing something that God is leading you to do, you have the power to produce change. You have the power to produce and invoke change. So he had to ignite something. He was taking care of the sheep. He was walking in this ministry. He was fulfilling purpose. I see, ministry causes you to walk by faith. It's about believing in God's will. It's about believing in God's will. See, when he lays something on your heart, if you don't have the means to do it, you trust God for it. You trust the king to, to, to provide. If there's an obstacle, you trust him to remove it. Just as I was saying. So if you're not walking by faith, you're not walking in the true calling of your ministry. Because ministry will cause you, give you vision to seek and to do things greater than you can achieve on your own. That's what ministry does. That's why everybody who does things, everyone who serves is not walking in ministry. If it was that easy about just seeing what you could see with your normal eye, we have ministers all over the place. But you don't need a title to be a minister. You don't need a title to serve. You don't need a title to serve. You do not need a title to serve. Service at the heart of the king is really about what ministry is all about. And as you follow his will, that's when you're noticed, just like Peter. You stand out, and then you become elevated to ministry. But if you're not walking by faith, you're not walking in the true calling of your ministry because the Spirit does not play it safe. Kingdom faith walkers do not play it safe. See, everyone has ministry. Ministry is not just for preachers. Ministry is for every single person. It's about purpose. And purpose creates kingdom faith walkers. We're going to learn how to be kingdom faith walkers, global kids. Because that's our name. We have to represent our name. It's our label. We don't play it safe. You can't fulfill vision playing it safe. Safe zone is for those who don't believe that God can. Who don't believe that God will. Not for those who live a kingdom lifestyle. Because one of the greatest principles of the kingdom of God is about faith. A kingdom lifestyle produces kingdom faith. Believing and walking in what is unseen because God has given you the vision to do it. The crippled man was always at the gate at the temple. Every day, every single day he was there. He was carried to the temple to beg. He knew and trusted that God would provide. He knew this. But see, his view was limited. He could only see what he was seeing with these eyes. His view was limited. He trusted in God. That's why he went to the church every day. But Peter, Peter saw something different. Peter saw something different. What we see naturally is not the fullness of what God desires for us. He said exceedingly. Abundantly, above all we could ask or even think. And that's what it's all about. Helping people to achieve that. And servitude. Peter ignited change. He ignited change in that crippled man that day. And change, see, always starts in the mind. That's why it's about focus. Change always starts in the mind. So Peter had helped the crippled man to gain focus and to receive. See, God wants to give each of us greater, but our minds have to be focused to serve, to receive. God is doing something in the earth. God is doing something great in the earth, and he's preparing his people, even the youth, even you global kids. And it affects all of us. The Holy Spirit is leading us to do things for change. And if our minds are focused for change, if it's focused on doing what is required, then we receive. But if it's not, we miss the greater. The crippled man gave them his attention, expecting. That's what it's about, expectation. 
Because faith is believing, and believing brings expectation. And all you need is this faith the size of a mustard seed. And then as you use it a little bit, it'll grow. So you can use it for something greater, then it'll grow, and then use it for something greater. But you still have to, when you start small, it's still about believing in something small that you may not see. But if you have great faith, you can believe in something great. That's when God gives you great vision. Just like Joseph. See, but we must live in a state of expectancy, just like when a woman is pregnant, see. That's referred to as expecting. A woman is expecting when she's pregnant. Because she knows eventually her circumstances are going to change. She knows eventually what is in her has to be released. She knows that one day the baby will come. So that's what expecting is all about. See, he expected for him an ignited change in him to expect for himself. And expectancy is faith. It's believing in what has not happened yet. Knowing that God will provide, even though you can't see it with your natural eye. So Peter said, look at us. We need to be on one accord. You need to get focused. You can't receive if you're not willing to change your focus. Colossians 3.2 says, set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. Your faith needs to be set on things above or your faith will faint. Your faith will give up. Your faith won't, 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 won't be able to last for the endurance of what, what you're going through if it's not focused. And kingdom faith walkers must stay anchored in God. That means have put your faith in God. Put your trust in God. Then and only then can change be invoked. And guess what, everybody? It is review time and we are reviewing ignite change in this part of your review we will say yeah or nah type it into the comments just say yeah if you believe the statement ignites change we'll say nah if you feel that it does not ignite change number one encouraging others to do better yeah or nah Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> what about number two, everybody? Talking about people or laughing at them. Does that inspire someone and ignite change? No. Nah. <laughs> what about number three? Okay, discouraging others from pursuing a dream. Yeah or no? Nah? Of course not. No. What about four? Praying for others. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we have one more here. Showing people that you care. Taking the time with them. Absolutely, because sometimes people just need some love. That's what it's all about. And part three, invoke change. Now, invoking change is all about the power of God moving in the situation. But you can't invoke change prematurely. That's why Peter had to get the crippled beggar's mind focused. See, he had to be believed so he could expect. And once he was expecting, Peter was able to invoke change. Remember, expectancy is faith, and faith moves God. Once the crippled man was expecting, he was able to receive. Now Peter said, silver or gold I do not have, but what I have I give. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up. And instantly, the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. 
Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. See, Jesus came that we would have abundant life. So we must give people what they need. Not always what they want, but we give it out of our abundance. Because sometimes what they want keeps them crippled. Sometimes what they want is not good for them because it doesn't inspire change. It doesn't, it doesn't ignite change. And we don't even have to invoke anything. <laughs> Just like he was, when he was asking alms, he was expecting some money. But Peter went above and beyond to help the needy. He gave him something that would release his potential. And, and when, you, when you lack vision, you, you, your desires are too small. So, so that's why we have to allow ourselves to receive from God. What am I supposed to do in this situation, God? What would you have me to do? How am I meant to serve? See, then what you want keeps you, keeps you, keeps you in line with God's will for you. But what you want when it's not in line with the kingdom of God, it keeps you needy, it keeps you crippled, it keeps you stuck. But God wants to be your source. He wants us to be in right alignment with the kingdom of God. And he said abundant life. So him not doing anything was not in right alignment. So we must be able to invoke the power of God in the situation. Peter was able to invoke change because he had relationship. He had the Holy Spirit dwelling inside of him, which allowed him to use the power. See, remember our memory verse. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall receive power. You shall. So if you have the Holy Spirit, you have power as well. And you can invoke change. See, ministry, or if you want to call it service, whichever, it's the same. It's not something that you do from your own power. It's something that you do from the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit anoints it. The Holy Spirit releases power for you to, to, uh, to allow you to help somebody else. The anointing makes the difference. And if you don't invoke change through the, through the blood of Jesus, then it doesn't, have you, it, doesn't, it doesn't allow you to utilize the power within you. Because you still have to recognize whose power it is. How you have been empowered. Everything should begin with prayer and everything should end in praise. Peter knew in order for God to be glorified, he had to be included. God had to be included. Because if he's not included, then he's not in it. So if God is not invited, it's not going to glorify him. It's not for his glory. And his power would not be revealed. He's not going to reveal anything. That's not his power for anything that does not bring him glory. We have the Holy Spirit dwelling within us. To invoke power. And we must recognize where our authority comes from. See with man. Certain things are impossible. But with God. All things are possible. Philippians 4.13 says. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. A lot of people take that scripture to mean, I can do all things. But that's not what the scripture says. The scripture says, I can do all things through Christ that strengtheneth me. See, no one can do everything. But you can, must know that you are only meant to do what God intends for you to do. And that's what he gives you vision for. See, through vision, God allows you to invoke change. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. We're not all led into the same things because what strengthens me may not strengthen you. What strengthens you may not strengthen me. What strengthens you may cause me to fall. It may make me stumble. But I can do all things through Christ that strengtheneth me. And that's what he gives you vision to do. 
And as we do it, we achieve greater. We grow. It's going to strengthen us. Because we're going to achieve some things that we were like, wow. I would have never thought I would have been able to do that. But through the power of the Holy Ghost, you can. Wow. I, I, look what God did through me. As a servant, he will. But you have to remember your position in the kingdom. We are all servants. We may be kings and queens, but he is king of kings and lord of lords. So we are called to serve. And when we serve one another, we are serving the king. God knows what we need. And as the teacher, the Holy Spirit leads us. And he will lead us into things that may be difficult. But as you follow, it will strengthen you. Don't think it's going to be easy. Just because you can. It may be difficult. But as you follow, it will strengthen you. You can't just pick up and do what someone else is doing just because you want to. Because if it's not meant for you, it may make you fall. But we must have vision. Even to serve. And, 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 and as you serve and invoke God's power for the vision... You'll see change. It brings change. Change will happen because the word says that you will. You shall. You shall have power. You will be my witnesses. You will witness greater. Kingdom of faith walkers walk into the unknown. They walk into the unseen like Peter. They invoke change. We don't always believe in or give, or give what is requested. But what is needed. We have to give what is needed for the body. To inspire. To ignite. And now we invoke it. By the power within us. Because God give us vision. As we walk by faith. So Paul said. Such as I have I give you. Out of our abundance. What do you call your abundance? Do you consider your abundance your money? We have to be able to inspire. That's a kingdom faith walker. He bring, he's building leaders. The Holy Spirit builds leaders. You may not always have what someone wants. But. When what you give is led by the Holy Spirit. It is what they need. It's not always about what they want. Even God said. I will supply all your needs. Okay. Okay. Peter gave from his abundance what the crippled man needed for abundance. He gave what he had. He gave what he knew. He was still being a witness. Kingdom faith walkers are witnesses that make other witnesses. And see, once the crippled man began to expect what Peter and John had to offer, he received it. He was able to receive. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. He jumped up. <laughs> he was excited. He didn't know that was coming. But once he focused his attention on receiving what the Holy Spirit had, he was able to receive. Then he went into the temple walking and jumping and praising God. That's why I said, always start, invoke with prayer and end in praise. Even if you don't see the results, end it in praise because it's coming. That same means I believe, I know it's coming. I'm walking by faith, I'm not, not by sight. What Peter was led to do allowed the man to be free to move forward in his, in his relationship with God. Because he walked, he moved, he jumped and leaped and praised God going into the temple. What Peter did, woo, allowed him freedom in the spirit. And see, that's the purpose of vision, to inspire, ignite, and evoke change for greater for the kingdom of God. Before, he just sat at the gate waiting for God to provide day by day by day by day. Never doing anything different. Doing the same day, day after day. He was carried there every day asking and expecting help. But no one could see. No one had vision. No one could see what the Holy Spirit wanted to do in and for that man. We have to allow the Holy Spirit to, to lead us, to guide us, to give us vision for greater, for more. See, instead of giving him what they, he, he needed, they would have just been giving him what he wanted if they would have just, if they would have gave him the change. Jesus. 
So instead of giving him what he wanted, they gave him what he needed. And when the kingdom of faith walkers show up, that's what happens. People receive what they need. Now because of kingdom faith, he was ready for more. People experience greater when kingdom faith is revealed. People are delivered and set free when kingdom faith is revealed. Kingdom faith walkers serve the need. Service is ministry. Ministry is a witness. Ministry is a witness for the kingdom. A witness knows through experience that we are called to be a witness. That we are called. And guess what? It is review time, everybody. We are reviewing part three, Invoke Change. And in this section, we're going to do a little bit of matching. Match side A with side B. The first one states ignite. Two, vision. Three, inspire. Four, witness. Five, faith. Six, invoke. And on side B, A, to motivate or encourage. B, the evidence of things not seen. C, to call on or petition. D, sing beyond your circumstances. E, evidence, proof, or testimony. F, to spark, excite, or provoke. And... These are just some of the words we've been having through this head of the class series since the Holy Spirit has been our teacher. So let's see what you know. Number one, which is it? Absolutely, ignite, to spark, excite, or provoke. What about two, vision? Great job, Global Kids. I see you. Yes, it is D. Sing beyond your circumstances. What about three? Inspire. You're correct again. Great job, everybody. To motivate or encourage. Four is witness. We only have three left. It must be D, C, or B. Which is it? Witness. Excellent job. You're doing awesome. Thank you so much for your participation. It is E, evidence, proof, or testimony. And five is what? What is faith? Great job again. It is B, the evidence of things not seen. If you remember, we had that same one last week. So the last one, invoke, must be what? Excellent. Awesome job. Thank you so much. To call on or petition. Thank you so much. Excellent job. Great job. Great job, everybody. Great job. I'm glad you're getting it. Now we're just going to review our memory verse one more time. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. That is Acts 1 and 8. Once again, the scripture gives us insight into our purpose. Okay? Because this scripture tells us that we shall receive power after the Holy Spirit comes upon us and we will. Each of us. No exceptions. It didn't say only certain people would. It didn't say only certain ministers would. It said we. That's the whole body of Christ. But we have to allow it. So this is going to be our memory verse for the rest of the series. Because it gives us insight into our purpose. And when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you shall receive power. And you will be my witnesses. And will is not a suggestion. But in order to be a witness. You must have experience. Just like in a court of law. When they call a witness, it's someone who's seen something. It is someone who knows. You must have proof. A strong witness must have experience. Own personal experience. And God wants strong witnesses. And in order to be a strong witness for Christ, we must be willing to allow the Holy Spirit to give us experience. The Holy Spirit is training us for more, for greater. 
to be a witness, to help somebody else, to do more for the kingdom of God. So as you go through, as you're put in the situations, remember, remember your purpose. Remember what the Holy Spirit wants to do through you. You are called to be a witness. You are called to be a light. You're called to do greater. So let's make the right decisions that we can have experiences in, the, in Christ as well. Stop trying to get out the situation and allow God to take you through the process. Let's make right decisions and move to the head of the class. He's training you for greater. Have a blessed day. We're going to pick up on this series next week. It's going to be week eight. But as always, I love you and be blessed. Bye.